Today, I'm going to give you five tips that you can use on the first day of tryouts when you try out for your baseball or softball team. Hi, this is Coach Andy Collins. I have to help parents coach or help their kids how to hit and play the game better by using my experience from 50 years of coaching baseball and softball. If that sounds like you, please subscribe to my channel and click the bell to be notified. First, we want to say there's only one time you can make your first impression. So when you go to your tryouts, make sure you're on time. Actually, make sure you're early. Do not be late. Do not be really even just making it as they start. Then what you want to do is you want to look like a ball player. And what that means is in one sense, you want to look like you've played before. You don't want to look like you're brand new. You just bought all new equipment, uh, starched white shirts, white pants, everything. You want to look like you've played at least once or twice before. So you want to get, you want to wear a hat. If you're playing girls softball, normally you want to wear a visor. If they don't use a visor, okay, but normally you want to have something that's going to block the sun if you're trying out during the day. Sunglasses are acceptable as well. Shows that you're ready to get a play that's in the sun. So that's the hat. Uh, normally just uh, sleeves. You don't have to come in a full uniform, but you do want regular baseball pants for girls. Uh, if you're used to wearing shorts, that's one thing. But for guys, you don't want to come out in shorts. You don't want to be coming out in street clothes. Make sure you wear a belt. Uh, how many people look like their pants are ready to fall off? That's not a good look. You want to look like a ball player. You want to have your shirt normally tucked in at this point. Uh, you don't know these people enough to get away with the uh, Ken Griffey shirt out, hat backwards. We're trying to make good first impression. So look like a ball player. All the way down to your shoes. You don't want to be playing in tennis shoes. You want to be wearing baseball cleats. Uh, this goes for the girls too. Because at the high school levels, you can be wearing metal cleats. So you want to be wearing what they're going to be using. You don't want to look like these are brand new shoes. Get them somewhat scuffed up, dirty, look like you've played in them before, uh, even if you haven't. All of these things are designed to make a good first impression. And just your looks, your presence is a first impression. So one of the first things you can do is hustle to every place, run, run hard. Uh, you can never outrun getting to the next station or getting to the coach when he has something to say. So when the coach calls you and they gather you, they want to tell you something. Normally you want to be on one knee, lock your eyes on their eyes, all these things add up. They're not going to make or break because obviously skill is the most important thing. But again, if you're on the bubble and there's a couple of kids that uh, are between, I'm cutting this kid or I'm keeping this kid, you want to be in that memorable category of, well, ah, I think I'd like to have this kid. You know, that you have good personality, you act like you want to be there, that you're willing to listen. Uh, all of these things just add up and they stack a little bit on top of each other. One of the ways when you are doing tryouts, there's a couple of things that you can do in your favor. One that I've seen over and over again, especially when you're trying to catch a fly ball, go hard to try and catch everything. If you miss it, they can train you on how to make the proper footwork to get it, but they can't train hustle. So if you are a, a hustler or train yourself to be one, go hard for a ball. It's better to have tried as hard as you can to catch a ball and miss it 
than it is to let it bounce and be safe. You know, don't be crazy on something that's obvious you couldn't catch trying to catch that. That's different. Uh, I'm talking about the one that's close to where you could have caught it had you put in extra effort. And even if you miss it at that point, that's the one that you want to be trying for. Get dirty. You know, if you're in the infield and you have a chance to dive for something, not again, not for something that is impossible to get. We're not want to be diving for something, you know, that's the second baseman's ball and you're playing third base. So again, when you're trying out in the skills level, when you're throwing and catching, you want your throws to be crisp, center of body, pick a place on your partner's uh, jersey. Uh, like here, I have a logo. Uh, try to hit me in the logo or, you know, just aim for the sternum here, just right here in the middle. And when you're receiving the ball, give them a target that helps them throw it to you better so that you'll be able to catch it better. If they're throwing it off, go to the ball, try and catch it in the center of your body. Now, if you're an infielder, your hands together would probably be a good thing. If you're an outfielder, maybe you want to catch it one-handed to, to show them that you're not afraid to catch one-handed. But you don't want to be catching it with your receiving hand way out here and your other hand way away from the ball because you're going to have to transfer the ball and go to throw. So they're going to want to see catch throw or catch get the ball out of your glove. And that can be done two hands together or it can be done, you know, catch throw nothing way far apart and definitely try and catch it on your throwing hand side not off to the uh, opposite side so in other words when the ball is coming to you you can just as easily catch it here or you can move in such a way as to catch it where the ball will be on your throwing hand side or in the middle so that you can get to the ball and be ready to throw. Another tip about throwing and catching is try to pick a partner that can throw and catch. And what I mean by that is maybe you've got a friend that you figured you're going to throw and catch with, but they're really not that good. If you remember from the earlier video, we talked about coaches are looking to separate kids into different groups, and you want to be in the group that can't miss or is getting evaluated, you don't want to be in the group that's getting eliminated. So if your friend or the partner really can't throw or catch, really try and avoid that at all costs. Tell your friend you'll see them after the practice, but you really need to, you know, throw and catch with somebody else. Uh, and the reason for that is uh, when you're throwing and catching, even if you throw it right into the middle of where they are and they can't catch it and it goes past them, all the coaches see sometimes is not necessarily that the kid missed it, but that somehow your throw caused that person to turn around and run after the ball. So it's, you know, it's not the most comfortable position, but you really want to get where you're throwing and catching every ball if you can. Uh, you don't want to be shagging balls on ones that you throw and or you miss. Really try and work that out into your practice. Be an encourager of other kids. Compliment ones that you see make great plays. In other words, be a good teammate. Coaches like to see that you're going to, you know, coalesce into one working unit. As far as equipment goes, in addition to having uh, shoes and your uniform and so forth, you have a glove and you may have a bat. Now, the high school level, they're using, for baseball, they're using a minus three bat. If you don't know what that means, find it on another video. If you have your own bat, of course, that looks good. Looks like you've played a bunch and you've invested something into it. 
what you do want to do is not worry about it. if you don't have a bat, they will have bats. So hopefully, though, you can swing their bats. If you're not used to a minus three bat and this isn't, you aren't re watching this video on the night before your tryouts, get in a cage and, or somebody and get a bat that is a minus three. So you, it's not the first time you uh, swing it because it, uh, it is a different thing, especially if you're using a minus five, eight, or uh, a lot less. As far as your glove goes, hopefully you've got a well-formed glove. Show you a picture of that here. Uh, what coaches can do is I can tell almost when you just lay your glove on the ground, which is another point, do not ever leave your glove on the ground. Always act like the glove is very important to you. So put it on a bench, uh, hang it if they have little hangers, four places for or cubbies to put the gloves in. But don't just throw the glove, act like you care about it, even if you don't. Because again, how you treat your glove is going to be reflected. And as coaches, we're looking to see that. And also, one of the things that I can see uh, right away is how a glove is formed. So if it's got a nice pocket, I know the person's played enough. We tell you how to do that in a couple of other videos and how to make the pocket better. If you don't have that, you can catch it in such a way that the ball, you know, pops in there pretty good. Uh, that goes with one of the things I talked about, making it look like you're a ball player. If you never used a glove or haven't used a glove in a long time and you want to buy a new one, hopefully, again, you've given yourself some time before tryouts to um, work it in. Just if you have to throw against the wall and catch it, or if you have to beat it with a bat or something that looks like the glove, this isn't the first time you've opened it. Uh, it might have a better pocket than some others. One of the problems that I see is there are some gloves, and if they lay flat, it means that they don't catch the ball in the pocket. They don't care about the pocket, and it's harder to catch a ball when the glove just lays flat. You know, you'll try and open it, but it it just doesn't open naturally to a nice pocket. The other thing that I see is if I see a glove that kind of has uh, these two fingers laying strong against the thumb, it tells me their kid is not strong enough with their little finger to catch the ball. So they're they're using their stronger fingers to catch the ball, which as a coach, that is not who I want on my team. Good luck. Hope you make it. If you want more information about how to make the team, I have a full course. And then you can also work out with me directly if you're in my area or if you want to work via the internet, uh, via Zoom or whatever.